Welcome back. My special guest this morning, Abani Antler, the Executive Director of Seeds of Literacy of Cleveland, and Dr. Carmen Stewart, the Program Director of the organization. It has been, it has a couple of locations, one on the east side, one on the west side. Uh, they help over 900 adults uh, every year. Students change their lives for the better by helping them learn to read, comprehend, and all of that. So let's talk more about uh, the change that you talked about, and that is heretofore, at one point, as you said, most uh, literacy programs turned away folks who didn't test at a certain proficiency level. Yes. You guys said, that's not working for me, right. that's not working for them. Mm -hmm. How did you change it? What did you do? Uh, well, first of all, we just changed our policy that it do didn't matter what a student's entrance exam scores were, we would accept them and try to help them. But the biggest change was preparing our tutor force and our staff for it. So we created a training for beginning readers because we do use assessments for every student, but that just kind of tells us where they are in comparison to other students and other learners, but it doesn't tell us specifically what they're struggling with. So we trained our tutors, over five dozen tutors, even more actually to at this point. We trained our tutors how to do diagnostic assessments of students so that it, we can pinpoint exactly what it is the students need to work on. Um, typically what we do is if a student comes in below an eighth grade level, we do a fluency assessment. And that helps us to see how accurately they read, how quickly they read, if they read with expression, and because fluency is a huge indicator of comprehension. So we started doing fluency assessments, and if we notice that a student isn't fluent, then we focus on fluency, and we know that that will help them to get to their goal. Part of the reason that that's important is that the tests are timed. So unless a student has a special accommodation for a learning disability, then they have a limited amount of time to complete the test. If your reading speed is slow, if you're very inaccurate, what we find is a lot of students aren't able to complete the test in time. So even with our initial assessments, we find that students' abilities are actually above what their test results are, and it's because they didn't have the opportunity to answer all of the questions. So focusing on fluency has been a big part of it. Uh, the other part of it is that we also do, if we find that a student is struggling with fluency and it looks as though they have some lacking fundamental skills, then we also do phonics assessments with students and figure out what exactly it is that they're doing that's keeping them from being fluent. And we found that even some of our higher level learners still have issues with phonics, which is not surprising. Um, not every school district teaches phonics. We've gone through decades where phonics was the thing that we did, and then we've gone through phonics where we used whole, uh, decades where we used whole language. And so a lot of times people have gaps from that. Sometimes they have gaps just because of mobility issues, instability in the home, absences because of illnesses, or just because not all every learner is the same. And so what we're able to do is to provide that one-on-one -on -one instruction in the specific areas where students are weak in their reading. All right. But let's talk a little bit more about that because it is so important that people understand that just because you don't read well now does not mean you cannot read well at some point. Lots of adults, as we talked about, are functionally illiterate. Uh, and like what uh, I think it's 66% uh, here in the city of Cleveland, mm -hmm. and some communities as high as 95%. Mm -hmm. People go, whoa, a lot of dumb people in Cleveland. Well, that's not it at all. We have to understand that and get rid of that myth. That is not the way it is. They just have not learned to read well. And if you don't read well, you sort of cut off your opportunity to progress. Let's talk about the 900 or so people that you helped last year and how you identify those folk. And for those folks who can't read, to feel free to come down and get this education, to get this knowledge. Now, our students are extremely courageous. They have are not lacking in t intelligence at all, um, as you mentioned, it, and then they develop incredible coping skills to address a variety of issues in their lives. Um, they just need that little extra support, and I think we, we are really able to help our students out that way. We operate really different than uh, any other literacy agency um, in the state of Ohio, and we really do that one-on-one -on -one instruction, so we're able to offer that support system to our students that they really need, and that courage to help them make that ask for help that they need and to help them succeed in life. And it's really tied to everything they do. Not only the high school equivalency exam, but their health, their involvement in their community, their involvement in their children's lives. It really is linked to absolutely everything an, an individual has of going forward. And let's talk about uh, the inability to read and how that impacts on their lives. As I mentioned early on, if you can't read well, Chances are you can't fill out a job application or you can't get that apartment that you need. You can't, mm -hmm. you know, read directions well on, on a prescription bottle, for example, or road directions that I can. But people do have coping skills. But let's talk some about uh, the deficiency and then how you identify that, as you mentioned earlier, and then as you walk people through that process, the light that goes off in their eyes. Yeah, a lot of people have developed great coping skills that most people just would, would, really would not recognize. 
Um, a lot of times they will be bring friends or family members to help them out um, filling out applications or help to help them decipher information. Um, we'll see that during our orientation process, sometimes extra people will be there, which is fine, um, to help them get through that process. Um, but we're able pretty much to detect it pretty quickly to help them through that process. And I know sometimes, uh, for example, if one cannot read well, they'll say, oh, I, I left my glasses That's at mm -hmm. home or, yeah. uh, you know, or something like That's that. Can you read this to me? And most people are going to say, oh, yeah, I'll be glad to do that because people want to be helpful. Mm -hmm. All kinds of coping skills to, to, and some have lived decades and 40, 50, 60 years not knowing how to read, but they get through life somehow. Mm -hmm. And I think I remember one of our tutors often say that, you know, People always will admit that they don't do math well, but it's very hard for someone to admit that they don't read well. Mm -hmm. It's just not socially acceptable. Yeah, reading is fundamental, and sometimes it's difficult uh, to, uh, to read the words and comprehend exactly what they mean. You can say the words, but if you don't right. understand what they mean, there is a disconnect, and that disconnect leads to you falling behind your peers. Sure. I mean, well, we have a couple different types of vocabulary. In our oral vocabulary, the vocabulary that we, of words that we recognize when we hear them is, you know, we develop that from birth on, but we don't start notice, seeing words on print until we enter the schools. And so for a lot of students, if they are not exposed to a lot of words before they start school, they are all, they continue to gain words at about the same rate as their peers who have a more extended vocabulary. So a lot of comprehension is understanding the words. And so what we see from some of our more advanced students is that they, they know how to read, they read very well, there are lots of words that are in their visual vocabulary, but when they get to a word that they don't know, they don't know what to do with it. They don't have the word attack skills or strategies to know how to determine what that word means. And so what they do is they, they become very good at guessing. And then the other thing is a lot, of, a lot of the ways that we assess students generally, it's very easy for them to use context from the questions and then to go back and find answers. And we want our students to be able to really get the meaning from the things that they're reading. And so we're trying to really zero in on what the strategies are that they're using, those coping mechanisms, and then showing them that they don't have to use those any longer because we can give them the tools to decode words on their own. And it's not like they're trying to be slick, they're just trying to cope. Yeah. Well, they're, they're, trying to, they're trying to make the best decisions for their households economically. They're trying to make the best medical decisions and they're trying to bridge any gaps in their knowledge with what, you know, what words they know or what, what a word could be. Um, I've seen students work on practicing for a driver's test and just guessing what words are because they were related to automotive uh, vocabulary like emissions or, you know, it's a, it's a car, I'm trying to take a car and it starts with an E, it must be emissions. So they become really good at that. And then a lot of people just have a lot of words that are in their visual vocabulary, words that they recognize on site. But then if they get to one that they don't know, it can be problematic. So what happens is they will guess a lot of words or they'll skip a lot of words. But if you're skipping words in science and social studies, then you're missing a lot of the words that are tied to the actual concepts that you're hoping to learn. And so the comprehension at the end of that becomes a struggle. And then we talk about moms and dads who hopefully will be reading to their mm -hmm. children. If they can't read, then their children don't get that kind of influence, that, that learning to, to read, that loving to read kind of thing too. Sure. Yeah, and the mother's education level is the highest indicator of how the, their children will be successful. Mm -hmm. so, we yeah. actually have one student who's a high school graduate who has been working on f developing her phonics skills, and one of the things that she shares with our tutors is that you know it allows her to be able to help her son, who's a first grader, with his homework. And sometimes she'll bring in books that she wants to read to him, and our tutors will help her with reading those so that she can develop that love of reading with her son. One of the things that I, uh, and I don't expect you to respond to this, it's just an observation. One of the reasons I thought about calling you today to have you come on the program is I just finished covering the Anaya Day Garrett murder trial. Oh, yeah. And her mother, Sierra Day, is l functionally illiterate, mm -hmm. operating at a third or fourth grade level. Yet she was able to move from apartment to apartment and, and to sort of get around the system in, in many ways. I'm not saying something, she was convicted of some of this stuff, so I'm not saying anything out of pocket. So it just, it drew my attention back to the necessity to make sure that if you know someone or if you yourself are in a position where you need to get this help, please come and get that help. We gotta take a break, okay. come back and talk more about what's available, where you're located, uh, how you identify the folk and all of that, okay? Okay, great, right. thank you. Very good. Well, listen, as we go to break, I want to let you know how uh, the CW43 Focus can be seen on demand on Cleveland 19, on the Roku and the Amazon Fire TV apps. It's also online. It airs every Sunday morning at 6.30 on CW43. 
Also, this reminder, if you need a Master of Ceremony or a keynote speaker for your nonprofit event, give me a call at 216-367-7323 or email me at hboomer at woio.com. CW43 Focus will be right back, so please stay where you are. I guess an hour will be here as well.